Good evening. Thank you for joining us for our 2022 Calvary Christian School Christmas program. We are so excited to kick off the Christmas season for us and for many of you by celebrating the truth about what Christmas is all about. And we're happy to celebrate the gifts and talents of our young people and our teachers. And so just sit back and forget about every care you have in the world, everything you might be concerned about, and just take in what we have for you tonight. Let me open us up in a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much that we can celebrate tonight all the gifts and talents you've provided amongst these young people and our staff. Lord, I pray that everything that is said and done and played here and sung will glorify you. Thank you for this Christmas season, for the gift of your son. Help us to be reminder tonight of what Christmas is all about. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, our Christmas program, He Is.
In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think of what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Mary must have wondered, how can this happen? She probably asked herself, why was I chosen over and over? But God saw her heart and knew she was the girl for the job. And even more, this was all happening in fulfillment of a prophecy made in Isaiah, hundreds of years before this moment. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel meaning God with us. Mary likely would have known this prophecy in her heart and she was now part of it coming to pass. So she said yes. She stepped out in faith, trusting it would all happen, just as the angel had spoken. Well, good evening. We would love to have you join us in singing some carols together. So would you please stand? And we're going to sing a couple ones you know. We'd love to you for, for you guys to be part of the choir tonight. Sing, oh, come all you faithful. Oh, come all ye faithful. Oh, 
shepherds, shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joy is strange, prolong what the gladsome tidings be, which inspire your heavenly song.
time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that the census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. It was homecoming day in Bethlehem. Soldiers, servants, rich merchants on camels, large families on foot, crying babies on hips. All had arrived to crowded streets and overbooked hotels. Travel is slow when you're about to have a baby and you're riding on a donkey. Mary and Joseph finally arrived in Bethlehem, and the only room for them was, was left with a stable for animals. The time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger. A manger? How is that worthy for a king? Surely the long-awaited Messiah would have entered the world with more fanfare than this. The Jews had waited over 400 years for this king to come and deliver them from the oppression of Roman rule. Was Jesus the prophesied Messiah who was to be born in Bethlehem, written about the prophet Micah? But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, are only a small village among all the people of Judah. Yet a ruler of Israel, whose origins are in the distant past, will come from you on my behalf. He was, and this child was the greatest gift our world has ever received.
Savior of humanity. Unto us a child is born. This shall reign forevermore. No. The shepherds watching their sheep that night in the fields outside Bethlehem didn't know the savior of the world had just been born, but God was about to change that. Bursting with excitement, God was ready to announce to the world that Jesus had arrived, and the first people he wanted to tell were the shepherds. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the, when the angels had returned to heaven, 
the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see the thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. Why did God reveal this great news to a grungy gang of shepherds first? He decided that these men were the first people he wanted to know about the Savior. He deemed them worthy of the good news.
Good evening, Calvary family. Uh, my name is Jerome Warner, and this is my beautiful wife, Kenitra Warner. <laughs> um, our children, uh, Jaden, who is in sixth grade, and Kailani, who is in third grade, have um, had the joy and privilege of being loved and cared for by the uh, teachers and staff of Calvary for nine years. Um, these nine years have been completely amazing for the unconditional love and care that the teachers and staff here at CCS have given our family. They give unconditionally to our children um, the love and care that they give. When I drop them off at carpool line in the morning, there is no doubt in my mind that they are safe, going to be educated, going to be loved on, going to be cared for as much as my, uh, myself and my wife do. The, um, the love that they give, it's, it's unexplainable. The, um, when we started at CCS, we lived in Irvine, and we ended up moving to Chino, and the love that they give so much and the safety that we have here at CCS, we end up moving to Chino and we still commute here for the love that they give. And when we, uh, when we moved, we thought naturally we would change school. We moved to a, a great school district and we went as far as going to orientations. We toured multiple schools and the only thing we had left to do was to talk to our seven-year-old son, Jaden, about the transition. And Jaden is a very logical, analytical thinker. So I was prepared to have that conversation with Jaden. I had my pros and my cons list, and we went through the pros. But when we got to the point where I explained the main difference between going from Calvary Christian School to a public school was going to be that they don't talk or teach about Jesus. That was a deal breaker for him. He looked at me and he said, Mom, you mean to tell me there's really schools that don't talk about Jesus Christ? I said, there are. He said, so... They don't pray for their food either? 
They may not, but you can still bless your food. He says, Mom, well, what do they do all day? Because Jesus Christ is in everything. And it was in that very moment that I realized the amazing teachers and staff at Calvary Christian School, they integrate biblical teachings and Jesus in everything they do. So he could not fathom the idea of simply taking Jesus Christ out of the equation. It didn't make sense to him. And so it's the, it's the way they love on our children. It's the way that they integrate Jesus. It's not just a Bible verse in the morning or a prayer in the afternoon. Jesus is in everything they do. He knows his identity in Jesus Christ because of the staff and the teachers here at Calvary Christian School. And for me and my husband, that's priceless. As parents, we all make sacrifices for our children to be able to attend Calvary Christian School. But take a moment to consider the staff and teachers at Calvary Christian, they're making sacrifices as well. There's no secret that they can take their skill set and teach at a public school or any other place and have a higher wage and, and make more money, but they intentionally choose to come to Calvary Christian School and love on our children and pour into them day in and day out, year after year. And tonight, we have an amazing opportunity to give back to them, to pour into them and love on them the same way they do for our children, through the love offering. And I just pray that you take a moment to consider the impact that these teachers and staff have on our children and how they're there for our children all day, every day walking alongside us on this journey of life. And I just pray that you consider giving to them so that your token of love and appreciation will bless them in a way that you would never imagine. We pray that it not only blesses the teachers and staff, but it blesses you as well. Press together, shake it, <laughs> and run it over. And we pray that you continue to enjoy this amazing, this, I don't even want to call it a performance. It's just, it's amazing. And um, you have anything else to say, husband? No? Thank you for listening to us and our story. And there was the baby lying in a manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what, had, what they had seen and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. The shepherds clearly weren't the only ones excited to see baby Jesus. About that time, some wise men from Easter lands arrived in Jerusalem, asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw stars the rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem, in Judea. They said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, for not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star had first appeared. Then he told them, 
Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for this child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so, so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star that they'd seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead over them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their chest, treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. After meeting the baby Jesus, they were miraculously warned in a dream not to return to Herod, as he planned to kill Jesus to preserve his authority. So they returned to their home by an alternative route. These wise men offered gifts to Jesus that were fit for a king. In that moment, they were proclaiming they knew Jesus was the Messiah they had been waiting for.
angel came to see Mary. She was doing laundry, and then the angel just appeared, and she was really scared. So Gabriel was like, Mary, you're going to have, what? I can't, I can't say good. Mary, you're going to have a baby. I, you're going to have a baby, and you will call him Jesus. And then Mary was like, I'm not going to have a baby yet. I'm only a teenager. I'm not married. Then the angel Gabriel told Joseph that Mary is not lying. She, you are having a new baby. And so they met up. They went to Bethlehem, which was Joseph's old town. They ride a donkey. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. A camel. Oh, yeah, a camel. She said, this donkey's fast. Well, they tried to go to a hotel, and they asked the keeper um, for a place to stay. The keeper said, we have no rooms, literally no rooms. <laughs> so Mary and Joseph walked away sadly, but then he said, the only place in here in Bethlehem hand that, that you can stay, stay is a staple. And then he just pointed the way, and they followed. When the shepherds were taking care of the sheep, then they saw angels. The angels said, a new baby is get, getting born, who is king of the Jews. The angel were singing. Glorious. And then the shepherd said, I think we should go there and meet him. The second, I think, said, yeah, I agree with you. And the other said, yeah, me too. They had to walk through a bunch of grass and bushes, maybe have to camp out a night. Mm -hmm. And then the wise man heard about it. And then a star appeared. Well, we should probably follow that star. It's pointing down to the barn. So maybe we should follow it. Maybe. So the wise men went to Jesus. They gave them gifts. A stuffed animal, like a hippo one, to have at home. Some diapers, and some wipes, and some milk, <laughs> some shoes, some Jordans. Gold, Frank, and Latimer. And I don't know how I would survive in that barn. Too stinky, too crowded, and ugh. I think he probably pooped because the room was very smelly. Thank you for coming. He's adorable. He's going to be our best friend. I love you, and you're the best baby i ever seen. There, I said it. <laughs> the new baby is going to change the world. As we look back on this Christmas story, we may feel like it's just a warm and fuzzy familiar tale that we spent a few weeks singing about in church and a few weeks celebrating as a society. We may bask in the lights and feel nostalgic as we gather with family and friends around a tree. But are we so far removed from the night of Jesus' birth that it lost its true impact on us? We've come so far from the miraculous moment, a baby born to a virgin in a manger a child that would one day be the savior of the world. But we may ask, where is this savior? If he's so good and so full of light, why do so many things in our world seem to be truly dark and evil? Our world is more broken than ever. People are hurting. The darkness feels like it's settled in and not going anywhere soon. We desperately need a savior. We need the light to break through. But here's some good news. Jesus didn't stay a baby in a manger. He grew in wisdom and stature and showed himself to be the long-awaited Messiah. He fulfilled prophecy after prophecy, connecting all the dots people of that time were looking to connect. Sure, his birth had been like a little underwhelming to some, but his ministry was life-changing and transformative to so many more through the ages and to us today. He died on the cross, taking the sin of the world, your sin and my sin, and rose, three, and rose again three days later, conquering death once and for all. So while we feel the heaviness and darkness of evil in our world, we can still rejoice because Jesus is on the throne in heaven next to God, his Father. And he's coming back again. He is worthy and the Savior we've been waiting for. And he will come back and dwell again with us. Let us now give him the praise 
blessing, honor, and glory he is worthy of.
Can we say thank you one more time to our students, all our amazing singers. Awesome. Our singers, our strings, our band, our worship team, our theater arts students, our handballs were in there too. We so appreciate all these great, wonderful displays of gifts that God has given you. So students, in a few minutes, we're gonna dismiss you to go to your teachers and your parents will pick you up there. But uh, we have some people to thank for this wonderful program tonight. I wanna start with our tech team, our tech guys in the back there. Just an incredible pros. They have so many details to put together for this program. And not only is it good for us, but for the students to be able to work with professionals and be able to do the things that they need to do with the tech team. It's good because a lot of these kids are going to be doing this at another level, and we're very excited about that. I want to say a special thanks to our piano player extraordinaire, Ms. Gilson. You're wonderful. She's been working with these kids for so long. And for those of you who don't know her, she's our fifth grade teacher, so she's a lady of many skills. And we so appreciate her. Uh, we want to thank Ms. Chocolati for all the work she's doing with the band. So thank you down here. Brass and woodwinds, all of that. We want to thank Ms. Weed for the work that she does with our amazing strings group. We want to say thank you to uh, Ms. McGonagall, who is our theater arts teacher. Where are you, Ms. McGonagall? She's, oh, she's, oh, she's right over there. She's doing great things for these, uh, with these students and this is just a taste. We've got other things going to be happening this year you'll want to be keeping an eye out for. Um, I also want to say thank you to Mrs. Toms, our art teacher. Um, the art you've seen out in the lobby, the art you've seen up here. If you haven't had a chance to check out the art that our students are doing in the lobby, it's just incredible. What's neat about what we're doing tonight is a lot of our students are finding, this is what I want to do. This is what I have a gift for, and so in all these different areas, so we're appreciative of that. And then this program was put together by Mr. Aaron Alimam. We thank you so much, our director. Not only does this, he leads worship at our chapels and our spirit assembly. We have an amazing team of teachers here. So thank you all for coming. Thank you, parents, for all the hard work you put into to get your kids to be getting ready for this. We so appreciate the parents and the grandparents that are here. This, this program was live streamed and it will be on our YouTube channel. So you can see it again. If you're wishing you could have gotten video of it, um, you, you'll be able to check out our YouTube channel and see that a little bit later. Right now, I want to introduce one of our pastors and one of our parents, Mr. Matt Doan. Hey, let's thank Mr. Seidman, too. He's led us so wisely and humbly in the last three and a half years. Well done. Just two more things, kids. I know you want to go get ice cream. Your parents are all taking you to yogurt land after this, so it'll be great. But uh, maybe that's for tomorrow. But uh, just a couple more things. Uh, one is uh, we have a church here. Uh, that meets on Calvary Christian School campus, and we would love to invite you if you don't have a church home. And so we have Sunday morning services, 9 a.m. in this very room, in the very seat that you're sitting in right now. And then Christmas Eve services are coming up. We actually have them on December 23rd, Friday night at 7 o'clock, and then on Christmas Eve at 4 o'clock right here in this space. And then Sunday morning, Christmas Day, we'll be here at 9 a.m. We would love, love to have you and your family uh, join us uh, this Christmas season. I want to point out one last thing. You saw the bulletin. Maybe you opened it up really quickly, though, when you got it. Look at the cover again. Isn't this so powerful? I love one of our students drew this piece of art. And then above that, the theme for tonight, He Is. Anybody feeling a little emotional when you heard the kids singing, He is worthy? <laughs> Jesus is worthy. He is wonderful. May that be the message that we hear tonight.
Let's pray. Father, just staring at each of these faces behind me, what precious, precious ones you have made. God, may all their lives, not even just in their grade school lives, but in all their lives, Lord, may they say, he is, you are worthy. God, I thank you for the way they've touched us as as family members and friends tonight. God, may this be more than a feeling. God, may we follow you. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. And we said, Calvary Christian School, Amen. amen. Have a wonderful night. Parents, hold on. Let the kids get back to the seats. Let the students get back to their seats, please. And then you can pick them up and take them to Yogurtland.